Hey guys, it's Jack. I make videos about all things tech. Consider subscribing if you're new here. At the end of last year, Freewell launched their first entry into mobile lenses with the Sherpa system, a case, this really clever set of swappable magnetic filters, and a 1.55x anamorphic lens for shooting cinematic widescreen video on your phone. The only lens in the set. But now Freewell's just launched the Sherpa 2.0 series now with six lenses in total, and just Look at this. Some of these lenses, by the way, are absolutely massive. This looks more like a mirrorless camera lens on the back of my phone. It's just insane. With more camera lenses and a bunch of filters to go with, the set now covers a much wider range of shooting styles. This is not a sponsored video, but Freewell did send me these for free to test out on the new iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I've got a bunch of photos and videos to show you shot on these lenses. And there are some things you should know before buying. If you want to check these out for yourself, there are some affiliate links in the description. And if you do find the video helpful, remember to subscribe and hit the like button. So let's get right to it. Now, there's a few reasons why you might want to use mobile lenses on a phone. The main camera on the iPhone has the biggest sensor and the widest aperture for capturing more light, as well as a much higher 48 megapixel resolution versus 12 megapixels on the native ultra wide and telephoto. So by using mobile lenses over that main camera, we can capture much better quality wide or macro shots, or capture more stylized cinematic video that's just not possible with the built-in cameras on their own. With the Sherpa 2.0 series, we've got six lenses, an 18mm wide, this absolutely massive fisheye which captures an even wider 200 degree field of view, two anamorphics in different squeeze factors, we just had the 1.55x before. For getting super up close to subjects, we have a long range macro lens which is perfect for capturing those tiny details and textures. And then later in the year, I don't have this just yet, but they'll also be launching a telephoto lens as well. They've also got a set of filters that all mount to the wide, the anamorphics, and that upcoming telephoto as well. Now to mount the lenses, you're going to need a Sherpa case. Last year's cases for the 13 Pros and 14 Pros are still compatible with these new lenses, so there's no need to buy a new one if you have one already. And they also have a case for the Galaxy S23 Ultra as well. But for the 15 Pros, Freewall has refreshed the design a little bit. We've now got this all black colour finish. All of their iPhone cases are MagSafe compatible, so you can use all of your favourite MagSafe mounts or batteries with the case. The case covers all sides, the buttons are firmer now, so you're less likely to accidentally press the lock or volume buttons. And there's a new button for the action button that's come to the iPhone 15 Pros, which still lets you easily press and activate any of your action button shortcuts. The case has a metal mount plate that covers the rear cameras. There's a mount point over the main camera, and also one over the ultra wide, which isn't really usable with any mobile lenses because it's just already so wide already. On the last few iPhones, this was actually where the telephoto camera was. But yeah, this year Apple swapped around the telephoto and ultra wide, which is, I'm guessing, how we ended up with this layout, as Freewell just wouldn't have known about that when designing these cases. But that does mean that there's no way for me to test the Sherpa series with the new 5X telephoto on the 15 Pro Max. For the most part though, you're going to want to mount to the main camera anyway, as that's going to get you the best image quality. This uses Freewell's F-Series bayonet mount. Line up the big and small teeth on the lens with the mount on the case, and turn 180 degrees counterclockwise to lock it into place and get shooting. And also, if you do have any of the magnetic filters that I showed you last time, those still work and mount directly to this new case, no problem. First up, this is the 18mm wide angle. Mounted over the main camera, this lets you capture an even wider scene. Not as wide as the ultra wide camera, it sits just between the ultra wide and the main, and this makes it a great lens for photographing landscapes or shooting in a tight space when you want to get more into the frame. Wide lenses introduce a bit of distortion, which you can use creatively to make something look bigger or further away. Just to say as well, all the Freewell Sherpa series are made from glass and metal, so you know they feel really well put together. This particular one weighs about 110 grams, so not so noticeable on the back of your phone like some of the others in the set, which we'll get to. As well as the better low light performance and the high resolution that you get from using a mobile lens over the main camera, you also get this really nice shallow depth of field when shooting up close to a subject, thanks to that bigger sensor. For the most part, you get some really sharp images from the wide. You can really capture a lot of detail shooting in 48 megapixels on a 14 Pro or 15 Pro, but I have noticed some softness and blurriness at the edges of the frame, so just be aware of that as well. 
It's more visible in some photos versus others, and I think I managed to capture some really great scenes with this lens. Moving on to the fisheye, and this thing is an absolute beast. I mean, just look at the size of this. I've never seen a mobile lens this big before. Just for some comparison, here it is next to Sandmark's fisheye. It's like well over twice the size. And here, next to an actual Sony lens that I use on my a7 III. Yeah, this thing is huge. It also has a massive field of view at 200 degrees, even wider than the native ultra-wide. These lenses naturally have a lot of distortion with how much they have to bend the light. You might want to use this as a vlogging lens, capturing daily life, or for filming action. This thing just captures everything, so you're not going to miss the shot. I also find the fisheye just fun to experiment with and try to find some creative angles. And I've just been really impressed by how sharp it is. You can shoot using the entire 200 degree field of view or crop in if you find a cool composition in a shot and make use of that high resolution 48 megapixel sensor. It does look kind of ridiculous on the back of an iPhone. All of that glass and metal weighs almost 250 grams, which you will definitely feel, but it pays off with the sharpness and the super wide angle for creative shots. It's a fantastic lens. Next up, we have the two cinemorphic or anamorphic lenses as they're more commonly known. These are more suited to video. They're actually kind of unique as instead of using spherical glass, they instead use cylindrical glass, which squeezes a wider image onto the camera sensor, which when de-squeezed leaves you with an even wider image when shooting. You get that cinematic look with black bars at the top and bottom of the frame. Any straight lines get slightly curved and you get this really cool squashed bokeh blur in the background. It looks really nice. These come in a 1.33 and a 1.55x version. For comparison, here is some standard 16x9 iPhone video. This is with the 1.33x mounted and this is with the 1.55. Anamorphics are also known for their lens flares and now Freewell has two options to choose from. They sent me the blue flare versions, which give more of a sort of sci-fi JJ Abrams feel to footage, or they now have them in gold flare versions as well, which you might prefer for a more subtle and natural look. These weigh 107 grams each. Like the wide, these also work with the lens filter set if you need more control over your shutter speed. I love these lenses for the aesthetic you get from them. They just turn any scene into something with a lot more character. They're great for making your footage stand out. Now, when I showed you the first Sherpa Anamorphic last year, I did notice some darkening at the edge of the frame, and I am still seeing that here with the new versions on both the 1.33 and 1.55. I was hoping that that could have been fixed. I shot most of this footage using the new Blackmagic Cam app, which is free, by the way. I'll link to it below. It's my new favorite pro video app. It lets you de-squeeze the footage when shooting, so you don't have to do it in post. Just choose which anamorphic you're shooting with in the settings under the camera menu. I also turned off the image stabilization in the app as sometimes if you have it on, you get this sort of weird jelly wobble effect when using any sort of anamorphic lens when you're moving around. If you do have the stabilization turned on, it does automatically crop in slightly, which will remove those dark edges, but just be wary of the wobble effect that you might get with too much movement. Then lastly, we have the long range macro. This is Another big one, but I absolutely love shooting with it. This is all about getting super up close to a subject to capture rich detail and textures. With mobile macros, you often have to get really up close when shooting, almost touching the subject with the lens glass just to get it in focus. But as this is a long range macro, you can move back a little and capture even more of the scene while still getting all of that detail. I love shooting with it. You get this really beautiful background blur behind the subject which just really draws you in and separates the subject from the background versus the more kind of flat look you get from the iphone's built-in macro mode which crops into the ultra wide camera you also get so much more detail with the macro lens combined with the 48 megapixel sensor it's kind of insane the images that you can capture with this lens on a phone I love this shot here of the solitary mushroom just sprouting up from the undergrowth, or this one with all of the fine detail in the leaf. The depth of field is very shallow, but I did manage to capture all of these handheld. And I use the Highlight app, which gives you more control for things like focusing. To go with the lenses, Freewell also has a new set of filters. Now, as standard, the lenses do come with a UV filter attached to them, but you can unscrew this to replace it with one of the filters in this set. 
but these are only compatible with the wide anamorphic and upcoming telephoto. There are four NDs from ND8 up to ND64. These kind of act as sunglasses for your camera. They reduce the amount of light passing through to allow you to shoot at slower shutter speeds. Ideally for video, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate, which gives you much less choppy looking footage. With an ND, you get much smoother footage and a nice natural motion blur. And Freewell has a separate set of magnetic filters for mounting directly to the phone case. You can see those in my first Sherpa video. When the Sherpa set first launched last year, the anamorphic was looking a little bit lonely on its own, now it's joined by a wide fisheye, long range macro, and some additional anamorphic variants. The set now covers a much wider range of shooting styles with a telephoto set to join the lineup later in the year as well. These lenses let you take advantage of that bigger, better main camera sensor and capture so much more detail than before. But there's still some improvements that could be made to reduce vignetting in the corners of some of the lenses. This is Freewell's first sort of foray into mobile lenses, and I'm really hoping that they continue to improve and expand the lineup. I'll link to these in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, it really helps the channel out. These are the first mobile lenses that I've tested on the 15 Pro Max, so let me know in the comments if you want to see some others tested, and get subscribed and hit the bell. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.